on, the Biden-Harris campaign is ramping up with a record-setting ad blitz. It's a 16-week, $25 million push in key battleground states with specific ads targeting Hispanic and black voters. Our political panel is here, Fox News contributor Tammy Bruce and former Pennsylvania Congressman Patrick Murphy, who also served as Undersecretary of the Army. Welcome to you both. All Thank right, you. Wednesday's the day. You're anti anticipating what will happen on the stage Wednesday night. Tammy? Well, first of all, I like being on set. It's great to have you back it's so he can see me give him the head shake. <laughs> <personally. laughs> uh, I think this is going to be great. The American people, they've made clear in various polls uh, that they don't want to hear hear what's wrong with Trump. They don't want to hear attacks in that regard. They want to know what these individuals stand for themselves. So this is a great chance for these people to really speak about the issues, to be able to move themselves forward. And, you know, I would have preferred President Trump to be there. I still do, because that is the spectrum of what the Republican Party stands for. But since and if he's not, at least these individuals now can really talk to the American people, let them know what issues matter, where they stand, how they're different from uh, the Democrats, how they're different from Biden, and I think the American people are going to see the depth of the talent bench. President Trump will see the depth of the talent bench, mm. and of course, I, don't, I think he'll be debating at one point or another, uh, but this is going to be very exciting and good for the country. Do you anticipate some make-or-break moments for some of these candidates, Patrick? Oh, no doubt. I mean, everyone's like, who's going to be two, three, and, and that's shaking, but the reality of it is, as Tammy said, I mean, former President Trump is the front-runner by far in Iowa, up 23 points. In New Hampshire, 57% of Republican voters said they would still vote for Donald Trump even if he's in prison. Mm. So, Well, as all that's happening, we've got this major ad blitz uh, for the Biden-Harris campaign. And while that is happening, this is the discussion in the mainstream media. Chuck Todd and a panel on Biden's low poll numbers. Listen to this. I think Biden has basically got three issues where he's not figured out what to say. Okay, one is obviously the questions about Hunter Biden, his son. The other is what to say about the investigations into Donald Trump. And the third is about his age. This stuff has taken a huge toll on him. His numbers now look more like Hillary Clinton 16 than Biden 20. He seems to be campaigning in a bygone era that he feels more comfortable in, that he wants to wishes the world were. So is this going to help uh, the Biden campaign that seems to be really struggling with their message? They're touting Bidenomics, while 8 in 10 Americans say that they're not happy with the direction of their finances. No doubt, but most Americans don't realize that the stock market under President Joe Biden has gone up 15 percent since he got in to today. The most Americans don't know that inflation was at 9 percent. Are they in 3%. it? Are they benefiting from it? They are, of course. The stock market going up? Of course they are. Oh. Yes. It's, and it's on the right track. It's funny. You guys didn't say that into the Trump years. Um, this is Kamala <laughs> Harris. Um, she apparently is trying to reshape her public image. I can't get into people's heads. She's trying to reshape her public image. Will it work, considering her very low poll numbers, Tammy? Well, in the coverage, she's indicating that she doesn't know why she's not liked, and she's not going to have to deal with it, and she can't get into people's People's heads. That's part of the problem. It's not admitting that something went wrong. Her numbers began to get underwater as she was given the border issue to be the border czar and as she failed. And after that horrible Lester Holt interview where she said that, you know, she's, you know, not been to the border, but she's been to Europe or she hasn't been to Europe. That is when she started to crash. So I think that the first thing is, one of their problems is, is they're not admitting what the problem is, which is her approach. She, in fact, is only above water with Democrats and black Americans. She is collapsing with Hispanics. 60% don't approve of her. This is a recent LA Times poll from last month. Uh, and independents, a 62% disapproval rate. So it's very interesting what they think they're going to move people on. But when we think about the stock market with people getting dividends, and that's beneficial, that is eaten up and more when you're paying 70% more for eggs and when you're paying 3 or $4 for gas when you used to pay $2. When you've got uh, proteins, cereal up 25%. So you might have a stock market dynamic, but it's being consumed by mortgage increases, rent increases, uh, energy. That's We're fair, heading fair into enough. winter. Fair enough. All and, of that. And, and it is just now, I would say, that you're starting to see even the mainstream media folks pressing this administration. Watch this really interesting exchange that happened with one of Biden former economic advisors. Listen. They're tired of paying higher prices and they think the president is at least in part to blame. Look, I hear where you're coming from and I get this question all the time, but I feel like that line of questioning is starting to get a little bit stale. 
Well, I guess they should just stop asking the question yeah. then. Sandra, listen, we went through the worst global pandemic in over 100 years, like literally, right? And so we lost 22 million jobs. And those jobs are coming back, 12 million new jobs, manufacturing jobs. Can I just say that? that That's not the point. The, the administration's out there touting Bidenomics that the economic policies under this president are a major success. But those well, are the people points at home say make. they're not but, feeling that. But they are a major success. When you pass the CHIPS Act, which brings back manufacturing jobs here in America, yeah. when you pass the Infrastructure Act, which has 20,000 projects. All right, Tammy, I have well, a this is, But this is the problem, because you're right. I mean, there are bright signs. But the thing that people feel every day is when they get up, I, they fill up the car, yep. they have to go to the store, and they won't address it. I, I agree. Can that's I just, the problem. I agree, right. but that's real why quick, this real quick, that, that commercial, they fought back, the Joe Biden commercial that's coming out on NFL uh -huh. Sunday, et cetera, uh -huh. it's talking about the, the heroes of this recovery are the American people, and not Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. It's about the American people. Bet on them, double down on Americans. It's okay. not addressing the issues, is it? I know. It's we a little hope bit of, that all those issues are addressed on the debate stage Wednesday night. You can assure they will be asked about uh, all of it by Brett and Martha uh, this Wednesday. That will be happening, right, John? Thanks to our panel. Yeah. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.